So recently there were a few of us in Japan, myself, the Mal Bowls here, and Mechanical Stig and Turbo Yoda. And while we were there cruising the streets in some mad cars, an idea was hatched like a dinosaur with a big JDM doodle. Isn't that right, Martin? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so we're surrounded by a couple of talented people. Um, they've all got their own ideas of what it is to have a pretty cool, unique car. They've got a very exceptional set of skills. That's right, so this idea was hatched to do something a little bit special, Martin. Tell us about it. Uh, so what you're about to see is the build of a V8 turbocharged all-wheel drive Nissan. Which is just, I mean, feel the dribble, people. Feel the I'm, dribble. I'm feeling it. You can quote me on that. I'm feeling The it. thing is, there are so many awesome people that are helping us with this show, and there's so many amazing stories and amazing builds happening that even though we weren't building this car, we thought this was too good not to share. So this is the double unicorn V8 Stagia build. So the car we're working on is the Nissan Stagia that I've bought. Picked it up about six months ago. Uh, the reason I bought it, I was actually joining the Stag forums to sell the Skyline front that we had. Um, and then I found the car popped up cheap, factory manual car, pretty neat for what it was. Um, apparently the seller had a lot of issues trying to sell it because of the because of the location of the car. Luckily it was actually close to where I live anyway, so I ended up going down and picking it up. My stager is a 1999 Days Edition originally. Um, it's like the second version of stager. So the first version just had a different front, different lights, there's a few different like cosmetic things. It's all structurally the same car, they just did a facelift on it. Very similar driveline to R33 GTR. So very strong manual transmission, very strong rear diff. Drive shafts, are, it actually does have GDR drive shafts in it now. I've fitted them just to fix it up. Apart from that, cosmetically, it's had the GDR front end done. Uh, full respray in and out. The reason I really changed from Subaru to a Nissan was just the size of it. Subaru don't really do a full size wagon. It's, the Stagia is more comparable to say like a Commodore, whereas the Liberty is more like a a mid-sized family car, so it's easier to put, like, there's tons more room in the back compared to, like, a Gen 4 GT or something like that. Um, also, being a grey import, there's a limited market for resale, and for that reason, it seemed to be really cheap on the market. Um, so, yeah, I basically jumped on it for those reasons, and it's been a great car so far. My Stadia has an RB25 DT Neo in it, very similar engine to the 34 GTT, with the only addition of the all-wheel drive. Manual drive line is all GDR basically. Um, slightly different gear ratios, the transmission case is slightly different. The RB25 that comes in the stage is very similar to the RB26 that comes in Skylines. Um, there is actually an RB26 stage also available. They're all pretty similar layout to say like your 1J, your 2J. We were cruising around Japan last year um, when we had a trip over there and uh, we started talking about his Stagia and um, what we could do with it. We could either just do a computer and a turbo and that sort of thing, but uh, that's not really how I roll. So I started uh, badgering him about doing something a bit different and mentioned that I had a VH41 V8, uh, which he was, you know, he obviously knew what they were, but he was pretty not, not real interested in it. And then I mentioned that it was a four-wheel drive version, which is really rare. So um, I'd, I'd actually tracked this down via another importer um, and he came up with one, uh, really hard to find because it's only in a uh, luxury car, uh, just purely four-wheel drive because of the like the road conditions up in the north of Japan. So I, I grabbed it just out of curiosity more than anything. And then I thought oh, it'd be cool to put it into a GDR or a Stagia. I didn't really want to do it to my stage here because I've got too many other things on the go, so Benny seemed like the perfect victim to me. We spent a lot of years playing around with 2JZs and 1JZs at work. Um, big, big turbos, they're great engines, you can make heaps of power on it without spending much money. But we eventually got a bit bored with that, so I started playing around with uh, Toyota V8s at first, because um, they're cheap. So we turboed a few of those. Then I, then I was really curious about the Nissan stuff as well, so we did one of those into an old Commodore once, uh, with all turboed of course, 
and um, yeah, it's just V8. It's just it's a different way of doing it. It's it's a real talky engine, really smooth. Then you just have to add a bit of boost to it to get the power out of them, but it makes it a much more more drivable vehicle than a big turbo 2JZ. So LS engines are the obvious choice for a lot of you know cheap turbo V8 action. The only reason that we don't use them in a lot is because in our particular state of our country, you, you can't legally put them in a car with a turbo because of our capacity to weight rules. So by dropping back one and a half to two litres, back to a four litre engine, we can legally turbocharge a V8 and get it uh, properly registered. So um, otherwise we'd be smashing LSs in things all over the place because they're, you know, they're good as well, but it's just, it's purely for that reason. This job uh, differs a bit from, from the Gramps project in that the Gramps engine, the drive line was, was virtually a bolt-in. There, there was no fabrication work to fit the engine in the car. It was only just sort of manifolding and that sort of thing that we had to, to work with there. This particular engine won't bolt into this car. It's, um, it will fit, but the engine mounts and everything are all different. So we have to fabricate engine mounts. Uh, the, the biggest problem with this is that Benny is obsessed with manual transmissions and he will not tolerate an auto which this engine comes with. It's the only option. Um, so we've had to go to great engineering lengths to make him have his manual transmission. We've had to design a bell housing adapter to allow the RB manual gearbox to go onto the VH engine. The, it, they're completely different in the bell housing shape. Um, we've we've um, got a, fr a friend of mine who's uh, clever at the engineering side of things to design it, uh, the, the adapter itself. A friend of ours does a lot of uh, work for us for the shop to make custom parts that we can't make ourselves. He's, he works at an engineering firm. He's also a bit of a solid works wizard, so we had him uh, design an adapter. Um, he worked with me to make it all work. The, one of the parts that we needed to get right is we have to maintain the distance between the front axle and the gearbox itself with the RB because it's a long engine. It's a six cylinder. This is a short V8. So the adapter plate's actually quite large which pushes the engine forward in the bay which is not, not what you want normally but it's just a necessity for to, the drive shafts to line up. So then we've got a, a flywheel that we have to get custom made or, or adapted, and then a clutch we've got to work with as well. So we're gonna to have to go through all these processes to get the, the thing ready to go in the cut. Once it's bolted together, then we can throw it in and start making our custom engine mounts, which um, we, we're just gonna modify what's, what the, the car's got already as far as the chassis and make it to adapt to the engine itself. The gearbox will stay where it is already, so that's a good thing. We don't have to mess around with tail shafts and things like that. Only the front tail shaft will change, which is just a, a small, thin tube. We've, we're going out of the ballpark here to do the, the V8 because it is different. Um, you can, I mean, you can modify the RB25 and make pretty good power, but it's just changing it up. So do something different. Anyone can whack a bigger turbo on a 25 and put a computer and tune it, but. For, for us, it's not really what that's about. We've done a lot of conversions over our time, or swaps that we'd like to call them in the States, and you know sometimes it just gets a bit boring. So we like to challenge ourselves, and this is the kind of thing that, that gives us a challenge and makes us excited about doing work and modifying cars. When we originally started talking about building the car, um, there was ideas thrown around of bigger turbo, just change cooler, um, put a Haltech on it, obviously. We couldn't think of any manual turbo V8 station wagons in the world, except for perhaps some um, European, like Audis or something like that. So certainly nothing Japanese. So we thought, oh, this is gonna be a pretty cool vehicle. Seems like it's possible, so we're gonna give it a whirl. Next time on the Nissan V8 turbocharged all-wheel drive manual double unicorn statue build.